Welcome back, Astro listeners, to this full moon edition of the Star Lady Soul Reader Network. This is Media Monk, and as always, I have our shining star of the zodiac with me, with us, Star Lady. There you are. Are you there? Hello, Media Monk. And we all know Star Lady is indeed Kim Marie, the managing director for our Evolutionary Astrology Network. We continue to certify new evolutionary astrologers, bring on new students and associates worldwide, as well as do podcasts like these, forecasting webinars, a lot of other stuff on our website at www.evolutionaryastrology.net. Our signature product, by the way, is our EA course. So if you're looking for the best value to begin your study with astrologers, as, as in your own astrological experience, just get that EA course. It's a great value on our website. And you can call one 345 for any clarifying questions about that course or to schedule your personal time with Star Lady. So thank you for uh, considering that. And I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Media Monk. Well, happy... Mm-hmm. Happy summer solstice, everyone. And uh, just before we have that longest, well, the day after the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going to have our full moon of Capricorn. And so we have been having the inner planets, Sun, Mercury, Venus, traveling together in uh, Gemini, and they have been making their waxing squares to Saturn. Now they are making their waxing squares to Neptune before they are all ingressing into Cancer. And I'll have a little bit more on Saturn and Neptune coming up here. But um, first of all, the sun's ingress into Cancer this year is June 20th. And the evolutionary astrology mantra is I evolve emotionally with self responsibility I evolve emotionally cancer with self responsibility Capricorn and so the day after on June 21st we're going to have the full moon of Capricorn at about one degree Sun cancer moon Capricorn so that EA mantra for cancer can really fit in on the solstice with this full moon. I'm like, don't tell me this. I'm going to start setting faster. I'm, you know, the master gardener here who just loves living outdoors this time of the year. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not ready for it yet. But mm, time marches on. Not much we can do about it except kind of make peace with it. Venus went into Cancer June 17th, Mercury into Cancer June 17th. They had their conjunction at uh, just shy of 020 Cancer. And now the full moon's going to come on that, you know, uh, 01 degree point as well. Or full moon Capricorn, I think I said. I mean, and so... Cancer Capricorn, you know, this is a first water sign in the natural zodiac. This is the month that we work our way through what we would call an emotional self-reliance. I rely on myself to meet all my emotional needs. And as we have that full moon of Capricorn, It's also then asking us, moon in the opposite sign of its rulership cancer, it's asking us for some emotional maturity as well. Now, what comes along on this full moon is that they are in a pretty tight T-square with Neptune hanging out at about 29 Pisces, 54 minutes. So we've got that square going on with that full moon and Neptune. And so hmm, where are we wanting to check out? Where are we wanting to do the Piscean distortions? I don't want to look at this. I don't want to face this. I just, you know, want to have my escapism. And if we are trying to just avoid whatever is happening in our life, 
we can have that pricing and disassociation and disillusionment, despondency, depression. It's not just the words, but they're coming in pretty many right now. We can have that Neptunian confusion that comes through because our world's not grounded in reality. And what adds on to this picture is the fact that both Saturn and Neptune are slowing down in Pisces to go stationary retrograde. Saturn's going to go retrograde June 29th, 1926 Pisces and just over two days later Neptune goes stationary retrograde July 1st, July 2nd West Coast, East Coast in the U.S. Neptune's going to go retrograde at 2956 Pisces Neptune is literally four minutes not degrees, four minutes from Aries making one last retrograde cycle and so these two can be adding to this picture of perhaps being out of sorts perhaps feeling some of that disillusionment that could be going on in our lives and what is interesting I had to look this up um, back when I did my uh, webinar on Saturn and Pisces a few years ago what I discovered was that Saturn and Neptune go stationary retrograde together in 24, 25, excuse me, 23, 24, 25. So last year they did it. This year, 24, stationary retrograde, only two days apart. They'll do it in 25 in early, early Aries. Saturn retrograde cycle, four months. Neptune retrograde cycle, five months. And then it's going to shift and they're going to go stationary direct very close together in Aries in 26-27. So Saturn Neptune averages about a 35-year cycle together. I've been already telling people they're going to have one conjunction February 20th, 26th, a zero Aries 20 minutes I've already got that one memorized oops no nope, excuse me I didn't zero Aries 45 minutes I've got the date memorized February 20th 26 Saturn conjunct Neptune one time zero 45 Aries however throughout 24 and 25 as Saturn is both Balsamic Neptune, getting closer and closer to it in Neptune's sign of rulership. Saturn form, Neptune formlessness. Saturn, you know, the laws of physics, Neptune, the laws of quantum physics, you know, they have a pretty interesting planetary pair together in which, you know, we have to make peace with what we can and cannot manifest in our world. You know, the old equation, E equals MC squared. You cannot destroy energy. You just change its form. And Neptune is the great divination that inspires gives energy whatever is highest and best for us to manifest in our world to put it in the form through Saturnian effort and so as we have Saturn stationary retrograde June 29 Neptune stationary retrograde July 1st 2nd we are in that fulcrum of recognizing what no longer serves us you know, the, the stationary retrograde in Pisces, it can be desires we've manifested that no longer serve our soul, and yet we cling to them for Saturnian security reasons. It can be fantasies and, you know, deep desires that we want, but just are not possible to manifest 
at this point in space-time in our world. So again, if you have any letdown going on, if you have any disillusionment, disappointment, this is the time to go inward and here it comes. My Neptune and Pisces mantras, and they're both question marks. Repeat with me, listeners. What would you have me know, Source? What would you have me do, Source? They can become real potent questions right now, and I always like to say when we ask Source directly, we get a direct answer one way or another. Sometimes we've got to ask more than once. These two planets turning stationary retrograde, mm, Neptune T-square, the full moon of Capricorn, we can be getting those answers pretty directly and sharply for ourselves right now. Maybe, Monk, I don't know if you're muted. Can you check? I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback, babe. Um, and so the other thing that then comes along with this deeper base note, as I like to say, with Saturn, both on Neptune, both turning retrograde, is as we've reached the summer solstice and we've had Venus, Mercury, Sun move into Cancer within a three, four day time period, they then are going to be moving forward in the next few days, week, making squares to the nodes of the moon. That south node in Libra, are we learning how to compromise and get along? Are we learning fairness and equality? Where are we revisiting the extremes of inequality? How well are we listening to others? North node in Aries, how do we balance our own sense of self and our own initiative with all of our relationships? And so right now we're going to have Mercury, square the nodes, June 22nd, 12 degrees, Cancer, Aries, Libra. Zia, square the nodes, June 26th, 11 and a half degrees, Cancer, Aries, Libra. And then in early July, July 2nd, Sun, square the nodes, 11 degrees, 20 minutes, Cancer, Aries, Libra. So we're going to have a boom, 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 one, two, three punch with these inner planets scoring the nodes. We're going to have a lot of emotional energy going on. We've got Saturn in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, the two water or in their water signs. Then we've got the inner planets in Cancer. They'll make trines later on, but those trines aren't going to happen until, you know, the middle of, of um, July. And so... We've got to get past these inner planets, square the nodes. A lot of emotional energy. How are we balancing it between ourselves and others? What emotions are arising for us? You know, one of the things that EA says about cancer is that you've got to really be able to internalize security because the outer world is constantly changing. Nothing remains static. In the outer world, evolution is the bottom law there is. And so the more inwardly secure we are, the better we can roll with the waves of change in our outer world. And right now, the better we can roll with those waves of change that are coming through with Saturn and Neptune dissolving whatever no longer works in our world. Now, I had said this before as well. Jupiter is in process of making a few one-off aspects to outer planets before it has its three waxing squares to Saturn, end of 24, beginning of 25. We had Jupiter make a nice waxing trine in Gemini, two degrees, to Pluto retrograde at two Aries, the busy bodiness of what has been going on. Now we are having Jupiter 
make one waxing semi-square 45 degrees to Chiron. They had their conjunction one off last spring. I'm going to pull that date out right now. Um, in about mid Aries, and now Jupiter has made it 45 degrees away, moving from new phase to crescent phase with Chiron. This is, again, when Chiron in Aries is a little wounded, it can bring out a bit of warrior energy with us. It can be defensive. It can be, I got to take care of me so you don't hurt me. I might hurt you first because that, you know, makes me feel like I'm on, in charge. And Jupiter and Gemini can be kind of quick on its feet and going, ooh, you thought you were going to pull one on me? Let me see if I can pull one over on you. I might beat you to the punch. But we also have Gemini, or excuse me, Jupiter and Gemini waxing semi-square to Chiron in Aries. And the opportunity to be coming across multiple ways, multiple ideas, multiple conversations, multiple learning experiences of how we could best be healing not only ourselves, but others as well. So if you're going through what we spoke about earlier, that Saturn, Balsamic, Neptune, stationary retrograde, and the letdowns and despondency, and the emotional triggers with the inner planet, then how might you utilize the curiosity of Jupiter in Gemini and discover new, better, more ongoing ways of healing yourself? And oh, by the way, if that deepens that emotional inner security, cancer, then we're less defensive. And perhaps we can also be helpful with others and their healing process that they want to discover and move through. Finally, as we move through the next couple of weeks, Mercury is going to move into Leo. Mercury moves into Leo July 2nd through July 25th. Mercury is moving further and further and further ahead before it gets ready for its next retrograde cycle that's going to come in August. So right now, Mercury's full steam ahead. Um, I know a few uh, weeks ago, the last New Moon podcast, if you were an early riser, you could get up early enough and watch all the planets visible to the naked eye, and a line up in the sky. I'm not an early morning riser, so I didn't mention it. But what we will start to have now is pretty soon. I didn't look up the dates. We're going to have Mercury return into the evening skies after dusk, after sunset at dusk. And pretty soon we'll have Venus return as well. I am going to make a note for myself with the, um, I'm making a note. I will look up those dates and give them to us next time. And so that I do watch because we have the Western evening views um, at our place. And so I love to watch those planets in the evening skies in the summer. Mercury and Leo. Hmm, it'll add a little feistiness to all of this emotional energy before we get done with our solar months of sun and cancer. So take a few deep breaths. Try to be a little calming with yourself because Mercury is going to go into the Leo, into Leo right on the heels of Neptune turning stationary retrograde in the last few minutes of Pisces. And, you know, water sign, fire sign, Mercury and Aries, 
if there's triggers going on emotionally, it might get quite feisty and my way or the highway. And so how well, South Node and Libra, can you listen as well as you want to speak? All right, everyone. Search for that deep inner emotional peace to move you through the next solar months, to move you through the next two weeks, to move you through this upcoming full moon of Capricorn. And then if you're in that northern hemisphere, God be like Meaty Monk and Star Lady. We live outdoors this time of the year. Our little camper is just a buzzing around the Black Hills, and we love it. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Thank you, Star Lady. And we'll see you next time on the Star Lady Soul Reader Network. Move with joy and a lot of passion on this somewhat poignant journey to the core of our soul. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.